who experience difficulties in breathing through the nose knows how it affects the quality of life. And uh, when it is related to the inferior turbinate, we can treat this patient surgically. And the powered inferior turbinoplasty, sometimes also called the microdebrider assisted turbinoplasty, is a minimally invasive surgical technique. What does it mean? It means that it addresses the cause of the problem with the minimal risk of the complications and also not compromising the function of the organ that is treated. The powered turbinoplasty can be performed both under local and the general anesthesia. And we have two type of blades, two millimeters, and then a little bit bigger, 2.9 in diameter. And they have the elevator, which is patented. And this elevator allows to create the submucosal pocket without compromising the mucosa because it creates the insertion into the inferior turbinate. And it can be rotated in 360 degrees and uh, the surgeon can work with different speed of oscillation from 60 to 3000 rates per minute. So what is the philosophy of this surgical technique? When we have to deal with the turbinate hypertrophy, which is not responsive to the medical therapy and is manifested by the nasal obstruction, we consider this type of the surgical uh, intervention, which is actually pretty simple in terms of the goal. And the goal is to achieve the volumetric reduction of the submucosal vascular stroma tissue with the preservation of the overlying respirator epithelium. So the, the blade is inserted into the inferior turbinate at the front and the anterior lobe, submucosally, under mucosa, not under the periosteum. And uh, when we create this pocket with the sweeping mode, as you see on the, on the image, we create this pocket. And we can work from anterior to posterior and to decide precisely how much of the tissue <coughs> we want to remove. And because we don't want to penetrate the mucosa, we uh, preserve its functionality and minimize the risk of the complications. <coughs> So what we know today about the clinical outcome, the, there are a number of ways to evaluate the clinical outcome, some the objective measurements and some subjectives. And in this presentation, we have selected the subjective one, which is actually the simple question to the patient, how do you feel? And we call it visual analog score. And uh, when you look at these two graphs, which were taken from the publications, actually they're not so young. They were published 10 years ago. And uh, they show the long-term result, very positive for the patients um, over the three years. And the, the reduction of the problem uh, was dramatically low and persists in 82% of the patients. There's also this study published in 2008 by Yanis and his group. Where they observed for 10 years the patients and they noticed that 91% of the patients were free from the symptoms. There are a number of studies confirming that there were no major post-op complications such as the bleeding, crusting, or atrophic rhinitis, both in adults and in, in children. And if you look at this image, this is the pre-op image of the hypertrophic uh, turbinate and deviated nasal septum. And this is the image uh, seven days, does it work? Uh, after the surgery, when you see that the distance between the inferior turbinate and the septum is large enough so we can see the nasopharynx. 
and the, the long-term effect is really, really high comparing to other methods. And there are a number of rationals uh, explaining this phenomenon, and it's, it's about the follow-up submucosal tissue removal, removal of the inflammatory cells, and also reduction of the cells who are responsive to the conditions that led the patient to this, con to this problem. So summarizing why so many surgeons perform the powered inferior turbinoplasty. The number of studies, actually it's really vast majority of the publications are related to the clinical efficacy, reveal that the, it's a safe and reliable surgical technique. And it's performed by the surgeons almost 20 years today. And can be used both in the office-based procedures, in the hospitality setting, and uh, this turbinoplasty allows precise and incremental tissue removal, thereby preventing many of the complications. And because it's critical, we don't want to compromise the, the mucosa. This is a mucosa sparing technique, and the mucociliary flow patterns are not disturbed. So the, all the functions, protection, filtration, and humidification processes continue. And. Uh, we have a number of studies, long-term studies, prospective cohort randomized studies confirm that this clinical effectiveness remains high for a long time. So this, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.